Hello, so today we will talk about the bobtail squid, which is a tiny cephalopod. The cephalopods are, of course, the squid, cuttlefish and octopi, and this animal is actually more related to the cuttlefish than the squid. And it's nocturnal and it's tiny. So here you can see its reaction to my video light. It doesn't like the video light very much and it immediately hides under the sand. So during the day you don't see these very much because what they do, they hide under the sand. Now, interestingly, they have this body cavity where these bioluminescent light generating bacteria thrive. And with that, they can operate at night. So it's a very interesting symbiosis. Now, there's a very interesting also paper by Jones and colleagues where they looked at the genetics of both the bobtail squid as well as the bacteria. They looked in Hawaii, Australia and Thailand and uh, they found very interesting things. So, you know, each circle here is essentially a genetic group and the colors are the locations. So you can see that the, this, these are the bacteria, the vibrios, they are very closely related, irregardless of where the squid was found, the bobtail squid. <clears throat> now, it's different for the animals, for the bobtail squid themselves. And these uh, form distinct clusters. So the Hawaii, Australia and Thailand clusters, you know, they, they are distinct subpopulations. So, you know, there, there seem to be these events where they expulse the bacteria into the seawater. And with that, there's probably more mixing of the bacteria than of the, the cephalopods themselves. Now, this is an animal we routinely see they seem to be hunting tiny crustaceans and, you know, they are, the, all the cephalopods are very visual animals. So even when they're hiding, they uh, have their eyes stick out and they're still looking what's, what's happening to you. And you can also see that siphon on the left side, so they are breathing. Now, another, uh, you know, curious thing about this is how small they are. So these animals are only about you know, two centimeters max, I would say. And the, this is really close to the minimum size for, you know, the cephalopods, squids, uh, octopi and cuttlefish. And there's actually a work which I'm doing with my very talented colleague, Abner Bukol. And we've shown that, you know, there seems to be a minimum size limit for vertebrates and the cephalopods are actually at that size limit too. So, you know, it seems because they have such complex bodies, particularly complex brains, that you cannot really uh, make them any smaller. So I hope you enjoyed this. You will probably also enjoy my book. So there is, uh, this is the newest one, Your Brain on Diving. And this is about scuba diving physiology and uh, free diving physiology, the lives of gobies, of, uh, about the, this fascinating group of small fishes. And... Of course, there is one more, and that this is coming in the next few months with James Reimer, 25 Future Dives About Environmental Problems in the Ocean. So, see you soon, and have a great day.